So this talk is the top 15 Python tips for data cleaning and understanding. So, yeah, so good luck, you're ready to go. Thank you. Okay, yes. So hi everyone, um, thanks for tuning in. So like um, for today, for today's talk, um, I'll be talking quite a bit uh, about like what I do at work, like 70 to 80% of my time, because like, you know, as a data scientist, as someone who works on data science project, like 70 to 80% of, of our time is spent on data cleaning and data understanding. But in a way, like, um, I feel like this topic is kind of um, underrated, like a lot of people don't talk about it. And mainly, I guess it's because like, it's boring, like you don't see any fantastic um, product from this process itself. But I feel like it's something that, you know, um, all of us, uh, whenever we are learning how to um, work with data, how to understand and analyze data. Um, these are the few commands that I feel like are really useful for me. And I hope like um, at the end of this talk, uh, you'll find this or all these um, commands and also tasks uh, that I'm going through useful for you. Yeah. So this, uh, you can think of it as like a consolidation of um, my experience. And of course, like I am also uh, happy to hear from you, like if you uh, have experience working on different projects and yeah if there's anything that you feel that I have missed out yeah I'm happy to add them in as well so um, a little bit about me um, I'm currently working at a global media agency called Essence and I am actually helping to build a data architecture over there so we are trying to build out a data warehouse and um, we are laying the foundation basically for more analytics capabilities and this is um, where like we do more ETL, like extract, um, transform and loading. And there's a lot of data cleaning involved as well. Data understanding, like trying to make sense of um, what are the valid data and what data do we need to, you know, clean, how, how do we clean them? Yeah. And um, outside of work, I run a data science blog called Data Double Confirm. So if there's a little bit of time towards the end, I'll share a bit um, about my blog. And um, yeah, basically, I actually uh, have been working with data like since my undergrad days. And back then in school, like I feel like a lot of times um, the data sets that we work with are clean. And also partly because like the focus of the curriculum is more on um, statistical analysis and also on modeling. So um, in a way, like um, the, the focus on data cleaning and data understanding is um, slightly less. and um, the, I feel like most of the time, I mean, um, my experience on how we should clean data is uh, yeah, related back to my work, like right on the job. I learn about the, the, the data itself, like how it's being collected and then all the rules governing the data, like, you know, um, for example, why uh, this data is being collected at a certain frequency and why this data is being coded in a certain way. So a lot of this is like um, really dependent on the business context. And I guess this is something that, you know, in schools, um, we might not be able to work with such data because, you know, um, they are not really business centric in a way. Like um, that's why for academic projects, sometimes, yeah, the data can be much cleaner than the real world data that we actually work with eventually. So um, over the seven years of working with um, real world data and also with open data, uh, I, yeah, I um, keep going back to the same um, stack overflow answers uh, to find out like, you know, how to do certain tasks, like how to do certain operations, which is why like, I eventually came up with um, this, this framework. I would say like this process, this um, guide, which I'm going to talk through later on, uh, on the 15 tips. Yeah, so uh, without further ado, I will just give a high level overview first before going down into the code. What this um, 15 processes, I mean 15 tasks is, yeah. So mainly like whenever we get the data set, um, we are interested in knowing like what data variables there are in, in the data set. So usually we will query to find out what the column name is. And then subsequently, we also want to know like whether the data that we read in um, using Python is uh, correct or not. Like, you know, whether Python loaded the data correctly. 
So it can be in various UI, say for example, if you use um, Spider or say in my case, I like to use Jupyter Notebook. So if I read the data in, I want to check that um, all the data, all the records is being read in. Yeah, then next, uh, I will want to understand like what um, the, the data types uh, of my variables are. So, you know, when Python reads the data in, right, like, or, or to be more specific, like when we read in using pandas in the library, then um, the library itself, like they will automatically try to detect, you know, what is this particular data type. So it is smart in a way, like, for example, if um, you have string, uh, like for a particular variable and string format, and then um, it will detect it as an object. Like if you have integers of float, yeah, then they would subsequently try to detect it in that way. But in certain cases, like it can go a bit wrong. So this is why like we also want to check whether the data type is correct or not. Yeah. Then next, um, sometimes we want to understand like what are the unique values uh, for each variable that we have. Okay. And this is um, really uh, one way to identify unclean data, you know, like, for example, uh, you, you know, like, for a particular categorical variable that you have, you, you only have, say, for example, for, for gender, you have, like, um, female, male, undisclosed, okay? And then it, somehow, like, during the data collection process, say, for example, it's not um, collected to, through system or it allows, like, manual entry kind of um, stuff, and then you have people uh, keying in like M or F, you know, so they are similar in a way like, you know, male and M is like referring to the same thing, but they are treated currently as um, two separate categories in terms of uh, unique values. So this is where, you know, like we want to eventually do some correction over there. And then first, this is why we need to know what other unique values there are. So next, similarly, like, so um, for continuous variables, we we'll want to understand what the range of values we have are for them, right? So like in certain cases, you only have um, positive values, like you can only take positive values, but somehow um, this particular variable this shows a negative value in terms of um, when you look at its distribution. So this is probably like an incorrect um, input or, you know, like, um, some, some something happened along the way during data collection that resulted in this. Yeah, and it's something that we want to investigate further. Yeah, so which is why we do this task. Okay, so subsequently next, um, we will also get the count of values, say by different groups, like um, by different levels. Okay, so you overlay, so instead of like univariate, like one level, getting just the unique values, you want to get the count. So this is also more of related to data understanding. And then in certain cases, you want to rename columns um, before you do any, say, um, merging or appending. Right. So um, this is why I also included this as a tip. And then as well, um, there are certain cases where, you know, you have um, uh, people inputting, uh, say, for example, um, values in, in Excel spreadsheet, right? And then um, they have coded it in as, a currency so you have like dollar sign and as well as commas and then you know eventually when you read the data set in um, using pandas uh, this variable is identified as like object like it is um, not identified as uh, integer or float as you would like it to be so uh, in these cases like we want to remove um, the dollar sign and the commas okay, from from our variable Okay, and yeah, relating back to the data types, um, whenever like we want to convert the data types to its correct format, yeah, so there could be cases where we want to convert string to numeric and string to date. So this is one of the tips that I'm going through as well. And uh, in other cases where you know you want to replace um, values with another values, like uh, back to the example of the male and female case, like you want to replace um, M with male and then F, uh, like yeah, with female. And um, I am also including a slightly more complex transformation over here, um, where you know we want to identify like data variables similar or different across data sets. So this is in a way also to understand like what are the keys that we can merge on, you know, uh, if we want to. And then um, 
again like whether if you want to do like a left or right join kind of thing like what are the um, variables what are the records that are going to be dropped because they don't appear in both data set right they only appear in one yeah and then um, similarly if you have like a lot of uh, data that is collected across time and um, that's when you know you want to append data sets like uh, to, to make your analysis um, more robust and more meaningful. Like you have uh, basically quarter one, or quarter two, or quarter three, you know, and then yeah, each quarter they collect the, the same kind of data. And so um, every time you have new data set, you want to add them together. Yeah. So this is also something that is very common uh, when working on any data science project when uh, you know you, you have so much data that you can work with yeah and um, similarly like if you have a lot of um, data that you know you are like uh, pending then there could be cases of duplication and um, these are the times where you know we want to deduplicate our data so um, there's different ways where we can choose to um, drop the earlier record or the late record, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And pandas can uh, handle this very easily. Yeah. And next, yeah, uh, similar to appending, say, for example, you have um, data from different sources and then you want to combine them together, right? So, for example, if you have like demographic data from one database and then you have transaction data in another database, yeah, then you want to merge them together. Yeah, and then um, based on like a certain key, like a customer key, for example. And this is something that is very useful as well, um, which so I, I'm also going to touch on. Yeah, and next, uh, the last tip before the two bonus tips um, is about recording. So in these cases, like uh, we want to say um, change or rather like include a new uh, variable based on the existing variables. Okay, so we can do some form of recording. And um, yeah, pandas can allow us to do it very easily as well. So uh, there's two other, um, I would say, uh, tasks that I do it sometimes, not super often, but I think they are very interesting and they are very useful as well. So I've included them in, yep. So uh, just to give a bit of context on um, what we are going to go through later on, uh, there's this um, particular scenario that uh, I have basically created um, that is relevant to my work. Yeah, what we do at work at, for, for my current work at Essence, where you know we want to investigate, say, certain um, factors behind campaign success, like digital advertising campaign success, or like yeah, if we want to do some post campaign analysis, then we have. Um, data from different sources, right? We have like uh, data that is related to the campaign details set up, like how, how it's being, uh, like in terms of like um, what market is being run in, yeah, how, how many days is it run in, you know, this kind of thing. And then um, we have also viewability matrix, like for example, um, related to impressions, uh, clicks, you know, yeah. And then Next, we also have like uh, results from the different platform that help us run uh, brand leaf. Yeah. So uh, we so you know data from so many different sources. Like there's gonna be um, common issues. You know, like uh, related to inconsistent naming of variables or fields across data sets. Yeah. Uh, so it can be uh, relating to the same thing, um, but uh, they are just uh, termed differently in different data sets. And then also inappropriate, inappropriate data formats, or like there can be invalid, duplicate, or missing value. So all these are related to how unclean the data can be. Yeah. So um, the materials for today's talk can be found here. Um, yeah. So I, I will be sharing this uh, link. I mean, I'll be opening up um, this Google Drive later on, so you can check it out later. Yeah. And uh, the two libraries that I'm going to go through today is mainly Pandas and NumPy. And yeah, as uh, you can see, if you search on the web, right, um, to, to learn uh, data science, like to learn Python for data science, uh, mainly, I think these are the two most essential libraries that you need. So before you go into, um, say, fancy modeling or, you know, like, algorithms, then uh, eventually, I mean, what essentially you need 
to be able to first process and clean the data, right? So these are the two libraries that lays the groundwork. Okay, so Pandas is built on NumPy, and yeah, NumPy um, basically is uh, a library that helps to handle um, different kinds of like data structure relating to arrays. Yeah. So uh, there's three um, data sets that I have created. They are all mock data. Um, and uh, this is a preview of the data set. So mainly um, this first data set called campaigns have uh, yeah, information relating to the campaigns, like the different advertising campaigns. Okay, so you have spans and um, information relating to which market and platform they are run on. Okay, and then um, there are also two other data sets that uh, are relating more on viewability matrix. So, like again, impressions and different kinds of like impressions, like this is measurable, and then they are collected um, across different times. So like H1, you can think of it as being the first half of the year and then H2 being the second half of the year, but uh, there are more data being collected in the second half of the year. So the thing is that like um, there can be different people, different teams collecting the data differently. So in a way, uh, there could be some inconsistencies here and there when it comes to like naming. So if you look at it, right, like um, over here we have campaign name, okay. But uh, in a matrix, we have campaign, for example, but they are similar. They are referring to the same thing. Yeah. So uh, all this are kind of like, I would say, um, a reflection of the challenges, like the data challenges I face at work. And uh, in this case, like due to confidentiality, so I am just creating a mock data, like, you know, fake data, because, yeah, we can't share the data that we have. So for the rest of um, my talk today, uh, I'll be using Jupyter to go through the code. Okay, so Jupyter Notebook is like a very friendly UI. And um, yeah, if you go to the drive later on, uh, there's like a HTML format as well. So yeah, so mainly um, if, you, if you just run through, you can see like uh, all, all the different commands uh, structured um, tied to the, the task number that I have gone through just now uh, in my presentation. Okay, so very easily, like you can see after you run um, the, the Python code, okay, then um, the output will show you exactly, you know, like what are the column names that you have in each data set. And then subsequently, you also can see like if you just run um, dot shape, right? So all these are like uh, commands that is tied to either NumPy or Pandas. And then if you just import them at the start, right, then you can already run it. And by default, like if you um, install Anaconda, Anaconda has Jupyter Notebook and also Python directly within uh, the distribution itself. So um, it's yeah by default already installed. So you don't need to run any like further pip install to install NumPy or Pandas. And then um, the thing that yeah I, I just want to highlight is like for example yeah uh, all this uh, in a way all these all these commands they they are repeated for all the three data sets so you can kind of like keep seeing the same thing but really it's like um, the process of understanding our data so uh, we want to be very clear you know um, whenever we receive a data set we, we go through the same similar process same treatment for all the data sets. So um, just one thing to note over here, like I have created this scenario in my data set whereby, you know, um, people actually do different kinds of coding or, or rather like um, do different kinds of uh, recording um, of the platforms where Facebook and FB, they are actually the same thing. And then YouTube, you can have like, you know, people not uh, doing caps for the T and also just abbreviating it as YT. So they are referring to the same thing. So this is something that we want to clean as well. Okay, so um, yeah, over here, uh, we can make use of the describe function, you know, to look at um, variables uh, that yeah, are numeric in nature. Okay, yeah. And for uh, variables that are categorical in nature, we can make use of value count. Okay, and then similarly, like if you want to look at more detailed breakdown um, by different levels. Okay, so this is by market and by vertical. Okay, you can make use of the dot count function. 
And then next, um, we can also, you know, um, instead of uh, outputting all the columns, okay, they are all the same because there's like three records for, you know, all these uh, columns. We can just choose a particular column to output. Yeah. So these numbers over here is the same. That's what you see at the top. Okay. So in cases where, you know, we want to rename um, our column names. Okay. So this is how we can do the renaming. Yeah. And this is just directly replacing them in the data set. Okay. So uh, again, like to remove symbols in values, we can make use of the replace function. Okay. So now um, the, the data for spans is clean. Yeah, we have removed those unnecessary symbols. And then uh, similarly, like um, for uh, converting string to numeric and string to date, yeah, there is um, this to numeric function in pandas. Okay, and then over here, when you uh, see this section, I mean, this part of the code um, that says errors equals coerce means like whenever there is a uh, a missing value, for example, or, or like you know, um, format that cannot be um, changed to numer to, to numerals, um, they will be output as missing. Okay, yeah. So over here, we want to clean uh, our values for Facebook and YouTube. Okay, and then also we make use of the replace function. Okay, so uh, in in this particular line of code, what uh, I'm trying to do is um, to add like uh, underscore okay, between all the values okay, in the different columns. So I'm overwriting this campaign over here because um, the keys that I want to match on have to be corrected first okay, before I can match with the other data sets. Okay? So over here, um, yeah, I'm looking at the, the variables similar or different across data sets. Okay? So the similar uh, column name okay, across all three different data sets is campaign. Okay. Yeah. And over here, oh, sorry, just to go back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, clicks and measurable is present in matrix H2, but not in matrix H1, which you have seen above just now. Yeah. So uh, concatenating or appending is very straightforward. Yeah, you just have to make use of the function append. And then now you can see there is a total of 36. Uh, rows. So, uh, cause in fact, actually, when I created these um, data sets, I made it a case whereby we have some form of duplicates. Okay. So, um, I am keeping yeah the last, the latest record. Okay. So, um, yeah, I didn't want the earlier records which are unclean to me. Okay. So next, um, we do some form of merging. Okay. Um, across the three data sets. Okay. And then uh, now I want to add in a new column variable, okay, uh, called days, where you know it's the number of days between the start and end date. So I want to do some other form of checking or like uh, identifying, you know, um, different different priority groups, for example. And then I do some form of recoding based on the number of days, okay. So this is where I cover the recoding, okay. And then um, this very particular. Uh, I mean, this, this, this is a new package, okay, which you have to install. And it's very powerful, I feel. So it gives us an overview okay, of all the variables and its distribution, okay, the unique counts. And from here, you can get a sense, like for example, you see now days you have like neg you know, <laughs> negative, which is something wrong, okay. So yeah, from here you can identify like unclean data and they actually give you a correlation matrix. So yeah, I think this is really useful if you want to have like some first-hand uh, preliminary understanding of um, the relationship between variables. Yeah. So of course, like some might not make sense. Some sort of correlation here might not make sense because it's mock data. Yeah. So in terms of imputing missing values, uh, we can first like, you know, if you're interested to know which are the value, uh, rows that have contained missing values, you can, ident I mean, you can filter it using this particular code, okay? And then next, I impute um, the missing va values based on mean proportion, okay? Of the measurable impressions to uh, impressions, okay? And then now, um, after I do the imputation, okay, I have, um, yeah, all these values now, yeah, that were originally missing, as you can see from the top. Yeah, so, uh, 
Uh, let me jump back to my slide. Okay, so just to quickly wrap up. Yeah, mainly uh, there are actually more exercises relating to Python and stuff that you can find on my blog if you're interested. So uh, do check it out. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.